there viewers, we're glad you're back again to join us on an organic gardening and harvesting adventure. We're here at the Learning Garden with Susan Lightfoot of Noyo Food Forest and our guest hosts are Chef Sherry Soria and her husband Dan Latterman. As an author, chef, and founder director of the renowned Living Light Culinary Arts Institute, Sherry Soria is often regarded as the mother of raw food gourmet cuisine. She has helped instruct and certify hundreds of raw food chefs through Living Light, including world famous Chef Roxanne Klein, Chef Chad Sarno, and Chef Elena Love. A vegetarian for over four decades and well accomplished with numerous awards, Ms. Sherry Soria shares in an interview what she finds most gratifying. My devotion to teaching vegetarian foods for 35 years has saved the lives of countless innocent animals and that dwarfs any of my other accomplishments. Let's go to the gardens and fill up our bountiful baskets with fresh veggies for our kale coleslaw tomorrow. Well, we've got some more things to harvest okay. before we can go to the kitchen. Yep, let's head this way. So we're over here in what we call the food forest, and this is where we have our fruit trees and we're starting to plant some other perennial crops, like strawberries that we have planted around our apple tree here. And eventually over time, um, this is going to be a really lush, foresty feeling area of the garden. It's a, um, a permaculture concept of growing food like a forest grows. A lot of people have never seen a strawberry uh, crop before and I see a huge one right behind your hand underneath near the ground. Oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. Yeah. That is absolutely beautiful. Lovely. And I'll bet it tastes good too. Yeah. Can I try? Sure. Ah, well, I don't mind a little bit of organic soil. Mmm. <laughs> I know, I want this one. This is so good. I can't imagine any dessert being any better than this. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. Wow. I mean, actually the green part here of the strawberry, provided that it's fresh and not brown and shriveled up, is actually perfectly good to eat. Cool, I didn't mm -hmm. know that. Mm -hmm. We've also got some zucchini here, which you can see the blossoms, which a lot of people eat these blossoms, too. The blossoms are great. In fact, you can stuff the blossoms with pâtés. They're really wonderful. And then you have the little handle of the baby zucchini right there. Did you want to get one I'm of gonna, these? I'm going to try it, yeah. We definitely are going to be using some zucchini today. Okay, well, I've got a nice size one back here. Wow, look at that. This is really beautiful. Right there. All right. Well, I'm going to have Look to make that. some pasta with that. Yeah, That's perfect. A perfect size for pasta. Would you like to take this little one with the flour sure. to do the pate Let's thing? Do. Let's do. Oh, that is so nice. There it is. Yay. I love that. Now, see, I could just eat it the way it is, but it really is fun to fill this with some kind of pate, and then it kind of sticks a little bit like this, and then oh, you that's serve cool. it on a tray with all of the flowers all coming around like this. It's just so beautiful. Okay. Nothing more gourmet than that. Right. That's <laughs> lovely. So we've Let's got... definitely get some garlic. Let's Everybody see. loves garlic. Here we here. go. See, it's starting to dry out, uh -huh. which is what you want garlic to do before you harvest it. So I'm going to find a nice fat one. That one looks pretty good. This one here. There we go. Right. So we just peel off these couple of the outer layers. And you get down to the beautiful bulb inside, which is absolutely delicious, mm -hmm. fresh like this. And when the garlic is really young and it's just shoots, the shoots are really good too, before oh. the garlic matures. Uh -huh. And then also if they send a flower up, yeah, the, the flower is really great. And if you grab them in the right spot, you can pull them out and that whole inside shoot comes out. And they're yummy. They are delicious. They have the texture of like asparagus, mm -hmm. which I really like, real crunchy yeah, like crunchy. that. <laughs> so we've got some white onions here. These are little salad onions. Let's see, these are getting 
they're what we call white bunching onions. So they're just real small little onions, kind of like a green onion, a little bit bigger than a green onion. They're really tasty. Great. There's some red ones right here. Give you a couple of those. Okay. All right. Look at that. Aren't those beautiful? You know, I love that color. Uh huh. Wonderful. Yeah, and this is the whole thing basket. is good. It's beautiful. Beautiful. My harvesting basket. When we return after this brief message, we'll be introduced to a variety of lettuce and visit the hoop house for some herbs, cucumbers, and tomatoes. Welcome back to our show on organic gardening at Noyo Food Forest Learning Garden on California's beautiful Mendocino Coast. Susan Lightfoot introduces us to the abundant assortments of lettuce grown at Fort Bragg High School. Okay, so this is a red romaine lettuce. As you can see the just beautiful color on the inside. I love this lettuce. And it's just nothing like picking vegetables in the garden and eating them right out of the garden. Another thing that you can do, is you cut this a little bit further, and then you just kind of flatten it out. It makes this beautiful, beautiful decoration without having to layer any leaves out purposely. It just does it by itself, and then you can fill it with other kinds of vegetables, and it's really a beautiful salad. Okay, let's add this to our basket then. This is a really unique plant. This is called Orac, and it's a purple spinach. Um, if you taste it, it's actually a little salty. Um, it's wonderful because it's still edible after it bolts, oh, and like pests don't tend to eat it. And it looks beautiful in the garden. It kind of looks like amaranth or mm -hmm. something like that. It has the same color. Okay. When these seed pods come, they come up real tall. It'll continue to, um, to mature. And then it'll just reseed. So this is actually a volunteer that mm -hmm. came up this year after one that was way over there last mm -hmm. year. And in a salad, that would be visually stunning, mm -hmm. having, different, having this color with your different colors of greens. Mm -hmm. And you have another kind of lettuce growing right here. Yep, this is the bronze arrow. Um, which is another lovely lettuce. So the bronze era is more of a spring lettuce. Um, so we won't plant this again until either later in the fall or early spring. Beautiful. You have another lettuce, oh, different kinds of Yeah, you want to check those out? This variety is called freckles, and freckles. it's a romaine, which is really interesting looking on a plate also. So these are pretty young. These have like another probably month to go um, before they really start to head up. This is a really lovely, I think it's called New Red Fire, and mm. it's a, um, a red leaf lettuce. That's another romaine. That's a um, Paris Island romaine. Um, we have a butterhead. This is a red butterhead over beautiful. here. Butterhead is so delicate and sweet. It's just a really, really nice lettuce. And behind you have some fava beans. We do. We're, we're saving these fava beans for seed, so that's why they look a little old. This is what a fava bean looks like, or a pod looks like. The beans inside, you open up the pod, you can see that they're very big, like broad beans, even bigger than a normal broad bean would be. But you can eat these raw. They're really actually quite delicious raw. Um, and you can make pâtés with them as well as marinate them or chop them and put them in other dishes. So I really like them just this way. And if you really you know, want to take the time to deal with them, there's actually this second skin on mm -hmm. them. That will peel off. Mm -hmm. It's a little challenging to get it off. But mm -hmm. once you can get that, that you see how this pod comes off of there and this inside seed is really good and this Very one's delicate. actually giving a little sprout. Let's go into the greenhouse and let's show people how we start produce. So you can see too here this is where we allow things to go to flower right by the door <laughs> so that hopefully some bees and stuff will make their way into the hoop house. Uh -huh. 
look at this gorgeous basil. Yeah, this is so wonderful. I love having basil in the garden. We use a lot of basil at Living Light. We absolutely love basil. It's one of my favorite herbs. Basil is a really great thing um, for a long harvest, too. If you're smart about how you harvest it, you can really keep it going. So, in particular, what we do is watch these joints. See right here? Where they split. Where the split is. If we harvest that right there, each of those is going to grow into one of these. And it keeps it from going to seed too soon, too, mm -hmm. because now you have young ones coming out again. That's right. So, yeah, and I pay attention to the ones that are starting to do those kind of pre-floral clusters like this, mm -hmm. and I'll harvest those. Now, do you have any problem with snails in here? We do get snails. I haven't tried sand, but I have tried copper wire. They, they mm -hmm. seem to avoid the copper wire. And the other thing that they avoid is, is uh, straw. So we put straw down all on our garden, and the snails can't navigate it. So pretty soon, we are going to have a lot of cucumbers. Um, and this variety, we've had a lot of luck with here. It's called Diva. Where was that ripe one? Maybe it was in here. Yeah, here we go. Isn't that beautiful? I like that variety because it has thin skin. Mm -hmm. You don't have to even think about peeling it. And the seeds are very small and delicate and not bitter. Yeah, so that's right. This is a wonderful cucumber. I'm really impressed with the... And they just keep giving, too. Last year, we had cucumbers until Christmas. Well, the last thing I suppose that I'm going to be using from your garden today would be tomatoes. We've got a couple of cherry tomatoes that have just started to ripen up over here. So you can oh, see yes. these are those sun gold. And that is my favorite variety of cherry tomatoes. They are so sweet and probably also my favorite because they do so well here on the coast. Right. Never Right, well, thank you so much, Susan, and thanks to the Noyo Food Forest Learning Garden for all of the beautiful vegetables that we got here today and for the education that Susan offered us about growing vegetables and the compost and everything, and also for the great job you're doing with the education of the children here. It's so wonderful to have the Noyo Food Forest here in Fort Bragg, being able to partner with Living Light. We get to give them our compost, and they get to turn it into great soil to make beautiful food for people. So thank you again so much much, Susan. It's just been great being here. Thank you. It's been great having y'all here. And just want to encourage everybody out there to grow your own food. Join the real food revolution. Yay! Tomorrow on Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living, Chef Sherry Soria will show us how to take our harvest today and create a spectacular kale coleslaw. We'll see you again soon. And coming up now is Between Master and Disciples here on Supreme Master Television. May light and laughter kindle your heart and uplift the world. Visit rawfoodchef.com to learn more about Sherry Soria and the Living Light Culinary Arts Institute. More info about Noyo Food Forest Learning Garden and other organic community garden projects can be found online at noyofoodforest.org. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash veg.